Time for an AT&T race break live from Phoenix NASCAR on Fox in prime time and Mark Martin age 50 the pole sitter looking for his first win this year his first win ever out of a Roush car his uh, previous polls this year winding up 31st and 6th the Hendrick cars have won the last four races Jeff Hammond here in Phoenix with of course Jimmy Johnson and then Jeff Gordon before that and he'll be fighting them off as we, got a we have caution. a caution. race track for some debris right there. And we saw some pretty intense racing coming back to that caution flag between Casey Mears and the 98 car of Bobby Labonte. So we saw guys moving up like Martin Truex Jr. and Casey Kane. How does that enhance or hurt what they were doing this caution? Well, I think they've moved up quite well so far. Maybe have an opportunity to come back to pit road and make a little bit of adjustment. May allow them to get a little bit uh, better. And we've just been told also that Bobby Labonte is going to get the free pass because of that good effort right there before the caution came out, staying in front of the leader. And track position, that's actually Paul Menard getting that's the Paul uh, Menard, free pass. The, the track position is so important here because this is such a, as Larry and Darrell have stressed, a short, quick race, the track position, you can't afford to lose like we saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. with that lug, lug nut pit road. Yeah, for those guys right now, they need to come down pit road and redeem themselves. And the same thing right now for everybody to see the leaders pull off on pit road right now. No mistakes, man, don't beat yourself. Mark Martin has led all but one lap. Let's check in with Steve Burns. Chris, Tony Stewart just told Darian Grubb, give me the same exact changes as last time. Just need some more of it. They're going to adjust that air pressure. Also wedge and also track bar, Matt. Kurt Busch running in the second spot in the upper left. He says the track is starting to come to us. The car a little tight, a little free. Doesn't want to make any adjustments at this juncture, Dick Bergeron. And Mark Martin has brought his car onto pit road as well. This crew is not known as the fastest on pit road, but they are known as one of the most efficient. They just don't make any mistakes. Chris. Thanks uh, very much, Dick. Steve, Matt. Well, the key thing right now is you keep hearing about these folks talking about the racetrack changing. These adjustments right now, Chris, this is a very short race. You've got to make the right adjustment. You've got to make a big enough adjustment so that you don't get caught behind. That's what's going to be important. But look at the pit road. I mean, the race off the pit road, the two car right now beat the five off the pit road. But look at the 16. We've been talking about Roush Fenway and how they've been performing on pit road so far. That 16 group, they have been on it. Tony Stewart losing four spots and about an hour and 20 to 25 minutes by the time the sun sets in that time frame from the time that they have begun. To vote for the AT&T fastest pit crew of the year award from your AT&T phone, text the car number for the pit crew you think will be the fastest and most valuable. The fan vote along with Jeff's picks to determine the winning crew each week counts for something. So your vote important to us. Vote each week for the AT&T fastest pit crew of the year award. And Bobby Labonte has recycled in front. Yeah, he stayed out right now. And he is now our lead car in the Ask.com car, right behind the pace car. Well, that's a rejoin, Daryl, Larry, and Mike. So we're under the second caution of the day. And if you don't think it's tight down on pit road, watch this race off pit road as Jeff Gordon pulls out. Count them across four wide. And she's just barely wide enough for four cars. But I tell you, you see Greg Biffle in that 16 car come out there third. Big attaboy to that group. They gained six spots on the first pit stop. They gained three spots. Then remember, that's one of the Roush Fenway cars. They had issues as well at Texas a couple of weeks ago. You know, Larry, it, it, talk about pit road, though. And you got to remember something. There are more cars on pit road today than there ever have been before. I mean, what do we have come into pits that time? About 30 some cars. But look at all the look at all these pit signs. I mean, that's all up and down pit road, and you got cars all over the place. Finding your pit box, look at that. Here I am right here. Where? <laughs> right. I, you know, I, I remember talking to Juan Pablo Montoya about this. He said, I see everybody's sign but mine. But that's a nightmare. How's a guy going to find his pit box unless what, he, you got to count him in? But That's what Dale Jr. said in Daytona. Gosh. I see everybody's sign but my own. You're right, Daryl. It's <laughs> now. There you go. Thumbs up. That's Carl Edwards's pit sign. All right. The target, of course, is Montoya's. We will restart with 33, make that 34 cars on the lead lap. And they're going to hold this off for one more lap. There is still a track truck down in turn one doing a little cleanup. And they need to get him back into position. You will see that the track is now shaded except for turn three. Everything else is in shade. Turn one and two since the start of the race and turn four most recently. 
Here's today's Ford Drive One moment. The very first Phoenix Sprint Cup race was also the first career win for the engineer from Wisconsin that was the owner, driver, chief cook, and bottle washer, Alan Kolwicki, Xerox Ford. Took the lead for the final time with 16 laps to go as engine failure sidelined Ricky Rudd. Kowicki won by 18 seconds at over Terry Labonte and drove his victory lap the wrong way around the racetrack. His self-described Polish victory lap had been in the plans for a long, long time. Alan Kowicki is missed. Want to win a Ford Fusion? Log on to WeRaceUN.com to see how. You know, Mike, we saw Sterling Marlin get into the wall earlier on that first caution. He's back out on the racetrack, but Joe Nemechek, Dave Blaney, and Tony Raines, they are in the garage area right now. Ready to go green. One more lap. And we'll restart this race. We've had just two caution flags, one for Marlin's accident at lap 55, and a debris caution at lap 103. Kurt Busch will be our leader. Now Mark Martin has led 102 laps. This is the 37th time in his career that Martin has led 100 or more laps. And the third time at this racetrack. In 1993, he led 212 laps and won. And in 2006, he finished 11th after leading 111 laps. So new sheriff in town, and that's no joke. Kurt Busch is an honorary sheriff of Maricopa County. Don't know if that badge will do him any good in Talladega next week as NASCAR on Fox moves to the fastest speedway on Earth where Kyle Busch will try to defend his title. Sprint Cup Series racing from Talladega next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific in high definition right here on Fox. She'll live up to her name. She's the biggest, the baddest, and the boldest Talladega Super Speedway. You left out fast. Oh, yeah.